My name is Sarah. Thank you for the kind introduction. I'm the nurse practitioner for the ear, nose, and throat department right here at Columbia University. And today I will be talking about hearing loss. I wanted to go over three main points about hearing loss. Number one, I want us to understand how do we hear. Number two, I want us to understand how do we lose hearing. And number three, I want us to understand what can we do about it. So first of all, how do we hear? In order for us to understand how we hear, we need to first understand the structure of the ear. So first, here is the outer ear that is composed of the ear that we all know and love, as well as the ear canal. The middle portion of the ear, which is right here, is composed, is composed of the eardrum, as well as three tiny little ear bones that are connected. And finally, the inner ear consists of various structures, including the cochlea, the balance canals, and the hearing nerve. So, even right now, as you're hearing my voice, the way that this is working is that I am transmitting uh, sound waves that travel through the ear canal. They Excuse me, can you speak a drop louder? I have a hearing problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect lecture. She should sit. She should sit. She should sit. I'll try to speak louder. Is that okay? okay. <laughs> Very good. So as I'm speaking, sound waves are coming from my voice, and they travel through the outer ear canal. They hit the eardrum, causing it to vibrate, and those vibrations travel through these tiny little ear bones, which also vibrate. That last third tiny little ear bone is connected to a thin membrane called the oval window, and that transfers to the cochlea, this spiral structure. Inside the cochlea are fluid and hair cells, and that energy transmits into the cochlea, creating a nerve impulse. <coughs> that nerve impulse carries through the hearing nerve and transmits to our brain so that we can recognize what we're hearing. Um, so I just wanted us to have a better picture of what these things look like. And this is a picture of an actual eardrum. This is a picture of the three tiny little ear bones. And I just wanted us to see that they're extremely small. This is a measure of one millimeter, and that kind of gives us a good size reference as to how small they actually are. And here are some very microscopic pictures of the cochlea, right here, that <coughs> spiral-shaped structure. And here is a very microscopic picture of those tiny hair cells that are so crucial to hearing. So let's move on to how do we lose hearing? There are three types of hearing loss, and we're going to focus on the first two. The first one is called conductive hearing loss, and the second type is called sensory neural hearing loss, and the third one is mixed hearing loss, which is a combination of the first two. First, we're going to focus on conductive hearing loss, <coughs> which is simply a mechanical problem that blocks sound from getting to our inner ear. And now I'm going to go through several ways that we can have conductive hearing loss. Something we all have to deal with at one point or another is earwax. Earwax is just dry skin and skin oil mixed together. And sometimes when too much accumulates or we push it all in with an evil Q-tip, <laughs> we, we can have hearing loss. If you ever have issues with wax, the safest ways to remove it is with earwax drops that they sell at any drugstore or come and see us and we would be happy to take it out for you in a very safe way. Uh, we use a variety of tools, such as suctions and tiny little hooks. That sounds scary, but it's not. Uh, another cause of conductive hearing loss is if something gets stuck in our ears. Children love putting things in any hole that they can find. <laughs> Again, if this happens, please drop by our offices. We'd be more than happy to take it out. Another cause of hearing loss in a conductive manner can be ear infection. Here is an example of an outer ear infection, so just the ear canal. You can see that it's red, swollen, there's drainage, and certainly that would block some of our hearing. 
Here is a middle ear infection where the eardrum looks very red and angry because there's infection behind the eardrum and that can also cause hearing loss. Fortunately, both of these can be treated with good cleaning and with antibiotic treatment. Another cause of conductive hearing loss is if there is a hole in the eardrum. This can happen from a bad Q-tip accident or a bad ear infection where a hole develops. And think about it as a trampoline. Uh, if there's a hole in the trampoline, it's not going to work. You can't jump on it. In the same way, if, if um, sound waves try to go on an eardrum with a hole in the middle of it, those waves don't have anything to vibrate against. Another cause of conductive hearing loss is called otosclerosis. What this simply means is, when we look at those three tiny little ear bones, that last tiny little ear bone called the stapes, instead of vibrating with all the rest of the ear bones when sound waves hit, does not move. It doesn't vibrate, it is stuck, and sound does not transmit and stops right there. And just to get a bigger picture, that is the tiny little ear bone that gets stuck. Uh, finally, uh, there is something called an eardrum retraction that's caused by negative pressure in the middle ear so that the eardrum gets very sucked in. This is a very severe example where the eardrum is so sucked in that it's actually pressed up against all the ear bones. Sometimes the retraction or the negative pressure becomes so severe that it could form deep little pockets in the eardrum and eventually cause something which could be potentially dangerous called a cholesteatoma, which is a buildup of epithelium or skin from the eardrum that can cause a small growth. Uh, when it becomes this bad, uh, it can cause symptoms of hearing loss, uh, facial paralysis, and balance issues. When the eardrum is simply retracted, we could put a tiny little hole in a tube to equalize ear pressure, or if it's bad, we may have to replace the eardrum. If it gets to the level of a cholesteatoma, it must be removed surgically. And now we can move on to the second type of hearing loss I wanted to focus on, known as sensory neural hearing loss. This is simply a problem with the, gener with the generation or transmission of sound because of a problem with the inner ear. Um, there are many causes of sensory neural hearing loss, a big one of it being noise exposure, and another one can be noise trauma. As New Yorkers, we are no strangers to noise. <laughs> So whether it's years of hearing the one train stop, or being in a rock band in your youth, or being next to a gun that may go off next to your ear, there's great potential for those hair cells inside the cochlea to be damaged, making it more difficult for sound to be transmitted. Uh, another cause can just be physical trauma to the head or the ear that could damage the inner ear as well. Another cause can be congenital or hereditary. Congenital means that you were born with hearing loss, and hereditary means that it's a trait that you inherited from your family. If you're born with hearing loss, it could be because of your family genetics, or it could not be because of your family genetics. Some reasons that you may be born with hearing loss, and it has nothing to do with your family background, can be a virus, exposure to medication, or simply not having a fully developed ear. And reasons that you may be born with hearing loss because you're a family can be either a genetic mutation or perhaps you have a syndrome such as Turner syndrome. Another cause of sensory neural hearing loss can be because of medication known as ototoxicity. Uh, some of the main top two medications that can cause hearing loss are platinum-based chemotherapy, which is often used for cancer treatment. Another medication are certain antibiotics under the aminoglycoside category, such as tobramycin and gentamicin. Um, other medications, which I don't want you to worry too much about because we take them so often, are very high doses of aspirin, high doses of non-steroidal pain medication, and certain medications that are used for blood pressure. 
Another cause of sensory neural hearing loss is known as sudden sensory neural hearing loss. This is when there is a sudden drop in hearing on only one side. It happens very quickly within a period of one to three days. And unfortunately, we don't fully understand why it happens. Our best idea is that a virus attacks the hearing nerve, causing hearing to go down. The way that we tend to deal with this is, number one, to do an official hearing test to make sure that you do indeed have a hearing loss. And two, we try immediately to treat it with steroids. We, our great hope with treatment with oral steroids is that it will recover some of the hearing. It rarely ever fully comes back. And usually about two thirds of people recover some of their hearing. Another cause of sensory neural hearing loss can be related to something called vertigo. Vertigo is a very misused word. Some people use it to describe being dizzy or simply off balance. But what it actually means is that there is the sensation of movement of either you or your environment when you're actually not moving. True vertiginous episodes can be associated with sensory neural hearing loss. There is a condition called Meniere's disease where you have symptoms of hearing loss on one side, vertiginous episodes, and ear fullness on that one side. We don't fully understand why it happens, but we believe that it has to do with the fluid imbalance in the inner ear. We try our best to manage this particular disease with reducing salt intake, reducing stress, and managing the symptoms with various medications. Uh, and now I'm excited to focus a little bit on what we call presbycusis, or age-related hearing loss. Uh, whether we are growing older and dealing with hearing loss, or we have loved ones who are dealing with hearing loss, it's relevant to all of us. What hearing loss is, is the gradual and equal decrease of hearing, particularly in the higher frequencies, as we get older. Some common issues that we experience with age-related hearing loss are the inability to make out words or to hear people properly in a noisy environment. Uh, we're unable to understand the clarity of certain words over time. Uh, it's very difficult to hear high-pitched noises. And finally, with hearing loss, there can be something called tinnitus or ear ringing. It could also sound like roaring crickets or bell sounds. Uh, this will affect roughly half of the population by the time they're 75, and by the age of 80, you are bound to be affected by age-related hearing loss. Yes. Uh, and now I want us to ask ourselves, why is it so important to have good hearing? The reason it's so important to have good hearing, particularly as we get older, is that if it affects our social, functional, and psychological well-being. Uh, things we may want to uh, remember are that it's important to be safe. If an alarm goes off, if there's a car zooming by, um, if someone's yelling at you, to be safe. Another thing is that it affects our ability to hear people, and that affects our ability to have meaningful conversations, thus affecting our relationships. Another thing is having difficulty hearing can cause things like loneliness, withdrawal, decrease in self-esteem, isolation, frustration, anxiety, and even depression. It can also cause confusion, difficulty focusing, having distracting thoughts, uh, and there's also an association between hearing loss and your ability to be able to do things and to do things well. Finally, there can be an association between hearing loss and dementia, which is a cognitive decline. All of these factors are extremely important in considering hearing loss and the well-being of a person. So that leads us to the question, what can we do about it? How can we help age-related hearing loss? One of the best ways to treat age-related hearing loss are with hearing aids. Um, I know you've heard of them before. You may own some. What they do is amplify sound, and as they amplify sound, they can also decrease tinnitus, or that roaring or ringing sound that you hear. However, for some people, their hearing loss is so great 
that even hearing aids cannot help them have clarity of words. And that's when we can consider the surgical option of a cochlear implant. A cochlear implant is a surgically implanted medical device, that's the part that's implanted, that can help patients with severe or profound hearing loss. Tiny electrodes, which are located right there, are placed in the inside of the cochlea, and that can actually stimulate the hearing nerve. And the, when, they hear, when you hear sound with a cochlear implant, it's received by this outer processor, and it transmits the sound to those electrodes, which can stimulate the hearing nerve. And this is extremely effective <coughs> in, having, in helping people have word clarity. And finally, uh, what can we do to prevent hearing loss? It's always good to be mindful of things that we talked about, such as loud noise exposure, protecting our ears, going through our list of medications with all of our various doctors, um, and even getting your hearing tested just to make sure that it's not worse than you think it is.